Hi, my name is Ranganathan SVN Kondala and I'm here to discuss with you a very important topic of ancient Indian history, the Indus Valley Civilization. Today, we'll give a quick overview of how Indus Valley Civilization was excavated, how it was studied, what are its unique features. We'll primarily be using a mind map system of understanding Indus Valley Civilization. See, Indus Valley Civilization is generally considered a Bronze Age Civilization. Chalcolithic, Chalcolithic era. See, Indus Valley Civilization's excavation, its study, its understanding, its features took a lot of time over the years for historians to understand. It remains one of the earliest developed civilizations among the civilizational features i mean a, a community becoming a full fledged civilization indus valley was possibly the first the time period of indus valley we generally give as 2500 bc to some historians go till 1300 bc this is the maximum See, remember, since we are dealing with ancient India, the specific years in ancient India, particularly for uh, um, the ancient periods of Indus Valley or prehistory or protohistoric period, may vary from historian to historian. That is why this period is also generally called protohistory. The reason why we call this as protohistory is during this period, we have a lot of sources to read sources to understand, but at the same time, we do not have exact clarity on what it is because the literature, the sources of history are not, we are not able to read them, we are not able to deduce or decipher them. At this point, whatever I am saying is essentially historians understanding and historians estimation of different, different Indus Valley features. Now, Indus Valley civilization was discovered by Dr. Daya Ram Sahani. He is credited to be the guy who discovered Indus Valley Civilization back in the 1921. In 1921, he discovered a site called Harappa. Then in 1922, Rakhaldas Banerjee excavated a site called Mohenjo-daro. The word Mohenjo-daro literally means Mound of the Dead. Mount of the Dead basically means like an artificial mountain of skeletons. When, when Mohenjo-daro was excavated, there were series of skeletons which were found in this period, in this region. That's why we called it Mohenjo-daro. Now remember the terminology that we give, Harappa, Mohenjo-daro is simply our terminology, the terminology which we consider to be Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. We are not sure if Indus people themselves called it Indus Valley Civilization. So overall, from 2500 BC to approximately 1300 BC. And we break down Indus Valley into three periods. Three periods of Indus Valley civilization. Or three phases. The early phase, the mature phase, and the later phase. Now remember, all the sites that you actually study in your textbook, Mohenjo-daro, Harappa, Rakhi Gari, Chanhudaro, Kod Diji, most of these come from the middle phase. The early phase shows some features of Indus Valley civilization. The later phase show a declined sequence of Indus Valley civilization. Majority of the core features are only observed in the mature phase. Now, that's why the chronology of Indus Valley civilization is given there. 3500 BC to 2600 BC, 3500 BC to 2600 BC, that is the early phase, 2600 BC to 1900 BC, we generally call this middle phase or mature phase, this is where most of the Indus Valley features come from and then comes the late phase, 1900 BC to approximately 1300 BC, this is where we see a sort of decline in Indus Valley's features. Okay. Now, at the same time, there is one more significant challenge with Indus Valley civilization. 
what can it be called terminology total 1450 plus sites majority of them based around indus river that's the main reason why we call this indus valley civilization but at the same time this also happens to be around the ancient Saraswati river. The ancient Saraswati river, that is why some historians call it Saraswati civilization. Like for example, Sir John Marshall. John Marshall called it Saraswati civilization. The Saraswati civilization because most of the civilization, most of the area tends to be falling around the Saraswati river system. And modern historians like Ar Romila Thapar, um, Ara Sharma even call it Ghagar Hakra civilization because Indus Valley settlements majoritily in India today fall around the Ghagar river, the Ghagar Hakra river. Now, if you see in terms of the extent of the civilization, totally 13 lakh square kilometers, approximately 1450 settlements. In the north, Indus Valley's extent goes till Manda in Jammu and Kashmir. In the south, it goes until Daimabad, Maharashtra. In the east, it goes till Alamgirpur near uh, Meerut in UP and in the west till Sukta Gendor of Baluchistan. Now, there is one interesting aspect or one interesting information that you need to know. The outermost settlement of Indus Valley seems to be Shortugai. Shortugai comes almost in the North Afghanistan region. Most probably recent historians have called Shortugai an outer trade post rather than a settlement. Shortugai was termed as an outer trade post rather than a settlement. In terms of total area, 13 lakh square kilometers or 3.2 million square kilometers and Indus Valley civilization as I said is considered Indus Valley because most of the settlements falls around the Indus River Valley. Indus River Valley's key river has been Saraswati River. So, that is why some of them have ended up calling it Saraswati civilization and few others have called it Gagar Hakra because this river goes like this as Gagar River. Gagar River is one of the feeders of the Ganga Yamuna river system. The river is completely, the settlement is completely named after Indus Valley river system. Okay. Unique feature, it's urbanization. Indus Valley has very good urban planning. Indus Valley seems to have had perfect urban planning system. Now, in terms of town planning, most important features of Indus Valley are its town planning. One special thing about Indus Valley towns is most of the towns are at least majority of them are divided into two part settlements. Two part settlements. In the west they have a high mound. In the east they have a low flat surface and in general people enter from the east go to the west. Now, this classification or this division of a city or a settlement into western high mountain and eastern low flat farm has generally been observed as a feature of the rulers and they ruled ruled being the common people, rulers being the ruling class. Now, this also is very clear because in the western high mound, most of the settlements are very clean, very flat, very fine finished. Whereas in the east, the settlements are generally rough finished, very rough finished. And in Indus Valley, this part Always remember, majority of the construction material or material used for construction is baked bricks. Indus Valley people have used baked bricks. Very rarely they have used stone in Gujarat section. Very, very rarely they have used stone in Gujarat section. Baked bricks or kiln, K-I-L-N, kiln burned bricks. 
And when we see housing in Indus Valley civilization, majority of the housing is a pattern which is followed even today in the rural settlements of India. Like for example, a house with a central open courtyard, courtyard in the open, rooms on the sides, staircases, first floor, roof of the first floor being supported by wooden beams. Now, this is a pattern that you see even today in any rural house you go. Any rural house you go, you will see this. Single and multi-room housing is observed. Every house had its own well, water well, and also completely tiled flooring and tiled housing. The housing pattern has single and multi-room housing, central open courtyard, rooms on the four sides, stairs, and this is also a commonality which we observe today. In our Vastu, we plan to put stairs on the western side of the plot. Even in Indus Valley, they had exactly the same. There's been a main question where they say uh, modern architectural features deliver a lot of features or copy a lot of features from Indus Valley civilization. This should be, this should be actually your answer. So houses have single room, multi-room. Every house had its own water well, so they were self-sufficient. No two houses had a same common wall. Houses were always divided by at least 5 to 10 feet worth of land in between them, generally called the no man's land, generally observed as the no man's land. Tiled flooring was observed. Flat terrace was observed in Indus Valley civilization. See, we have this patio roofs like this. This is called patio. This is not observed in Indus Valley civilization. Instead, they have flat roof housing, flat. Okay. Some of the houses were too big, some were too small and one common feature in Indus Valley civilization which we observe even today in modern constructions is row housing or sequential housing, row housing or sequential housing. Very rarely but definitely we have seen two storied houses, houses with two floors, first floor and second floor and there has also been examples of bathrooms or toilets in the first and second floor. So, Indus Valley people also knew about plumbing and hygiene and sanitation. Bath areas were always layered with baked bricks and sealed with gypsum. They used to layer baked bricks wherever water falls or wherever water happens, baked bricks. And then in between the bricks, they layer gypsum. That way, it becomes a waterproof sealant. Now, this is a pattern which you observe much later into medieval Indian history also. Even in medieval constructions, we used to do gypsum. Uske baad we started doing, after that, we started doing uh, um, lead sealing. If you go to any temples in South India, you will actually see temple flooring having lead layered in between them, molten lead. A copy from the gypsum layering of Indus Valley civilization and as I said there were toilets on the first floor the toilets were even connected to the common drain canal using terracotta pipes terracotta means baked clay they used to use baked clay pipes now this is a pattern observed again much later into even modern Indian history even modern constructions just about 30 40 years back also buildings used to have baked clay water pipes from Indus Valley Civilization, there is also a series of public structures like bath, probably like a layered uh, stepped water tank, which we observe in Mohanjadaro, and granaries. Granaries were essentially large storehouses where grains were stored, most probably for essential supplies when needed. There is one more pattern. If you see roads and drainage of Indus Valley civilization, Indus Valley entire settlement was grid pattern. Grid pattern is basically where roads actually cut into each other at 90 degree angle, exactly 90 degrees. No 60 degree, no turnings. Perfect grid planning. Also, the cities were layered in parts. So, there used to be one full block, then a 90 degree road structure, one more block, 90 degree road structure and each block has same type of housing. One room, one attached bathroom, two rooms, 
one attached bathroom in this model. So basically this was a very well planned, well established living system. And when we see the drainage, the drain canals were channels, three feet deep channels on the sides of the road or sometimes under the road. All houses were connected to these drain canals and these were completely covered with slabs, either stone slabs or baked brick layering. Pretty much every house had a drain canal. That indicates the importance Indus Valley people gave to hygiene and health, the drain canal system. Now, this is ex the best example I'll show you of a house pattern. See this. Central open courtyard and you can see rooms on the sides, flat roof on the top. Rooms on all the sides, staircases and how the beams are supporting the upper roof. This is a pattern which we observe even today in modern housing. And in Indus Valley, two important words of caution. Number one, the doors and the windows of the house do not open onto the main street. If you observe here, it's very clear. There are no windows or doors here. They don't open onto the main street. Number one. Second thing, you see the houses. Houses have a gap in between them. Now, this is a feature which we observe in modern European house planning. This is not something which we observe in much later period also. Some important cities of Indus Valley civilization. For example, take Harappa. Harappa is on the bank of Ravi River. It was the first excavated site by Dr. Dayaram Sahani. He was an archaeologist with ASI. And Harappa's most important findings is a citadel. Citadel basically means an area with large buildings, most probably you can say buildings of rulers, buildings of administrators or buildings of governance. Great granary, a very big storehouse, approximately even according to R. S. Sharma, about 884 square feet worth of uh, size of granary. This is very similar to the modern day FCI godowns. You know how we have FCI Godans, Food Corporation of India Godans, same logic. Most probably, Indus Valley, their grains used to be brought from other settlements. They used to store it in the grains and whenever there were floods or whenever there was an emergency requirement, these grains used to be supplied to the people. Circular platforms for thrashing the grains were also observed. Now, this is common which we observe. Even today in your villages, you will see this. A circular platform where grain paddy is actually beaten, paddy is thrashed. We also see two room barracks or two room housing and plenty of bronze items were observed in Harappa. Plenty of bronze items. Many, numerous of them were observed in Harappa. This is basically the granary example. If you see layered brick and it also has uh, air inlet channels here. You can see air inlet channels every now and then. The logic of these air inlet channels is to have enough amount of aeration so that the grains don't get ruined. When it comes to Mohanjadaro, Mohanjadaro is on the banks of Indus River. It was excavated by Rakhal Das Banerjee in 1922. As of now, Mohanjadaro is considered the largest excavated Indus Valley site. Fact. Remember, Mohanjadaro is in Pakistan. So, it is Rakhi Gari of India, which is the largest Indus Valley site in India. In India, it is Rakhi Gari, but overall Indus Valley, it is Mohanjadaro. As I said, the word Mohanjadaro basically means mound of the dead because numerous skeletons were found here. Plenty of skeletons were found here when R.D. Sir was actually excavating. It had the largest granary. One special excavation or one special thing about Indus Valley, uh, Mohanjadaro site is the Great Bath. The Great Bath is like a stepped water tank. It looks like this. It 
the stepped water tank, very similar to how you have stepped water tanks in the temples in South India today. It was layered with bricks, sealed with gypsum, with galleries on top. See, galleries are basically small rooms. These were small rooms on the top. Most probably it is because of galleries that people like Sir John Marshall and R. D. Banerjee said that this great bath might have been for some sort of ritual. That is, people might have been taking a dip in the great bath and go to gallery and do some ritual. Also, the bronze girl dancing statue, bronze dancing girl statue was also observed in Mohenjo-daro. Mohenjo-daro is also special for seals. Seals were little blocks, little 2 inch by 2 inch square blocks made of steatite or soapstone, steatite or soapstone. They have an impression of unicorn, Pasupadi impression, Pasupadi Nada seal, most popular, it is basically a seal of a yogi sitting in the center with four animals on four sides, bull, rhinoceros, buffalo, elephant with two antelopes near the legs. Unique Pasupadi Nada seal which historians called even Proto Shiva seal and then the mother goddess seal, this is also something unique to Indus Valley civilization may particularly Mohenjo-daro. Now, this is what I was meaning by saying grid plan structures. You can see how the entire site is grid structure. This is the western high mount. This is the eastern low platform, Indus river. So, people enter from the east, they go to the west and entirely it is per perfectly grid planned structure. It looks perfect as an Indus Valley plan. Okay. This is an ideal example of um, Mohanjadaro. And this one on top of my mound, the place which is there, this is what we call citadel. The area on top of the mountain, flat thing where everything is fine finished, that is what we call citadel. Okay. Example of great bath in Mohanjadaro, stepped water tank. One of the important places in India is Lothal, a city which has been divided into six parts. Speciality of Lothal is an artificial dockyard. See, Lothal is actually not on the coast. It is slightly inside in Gujarat. But still, they built a little canal all the way from the sea coast till the settlement with an artificial dockyard of approximately 238 feet deep might be mainly for sea trade. See, Indus Valley people used to do extensive amount of trade with uh, Mesopotamians. Plenty of trade with Mesopotamians. We see an observation here. Houses, building, entrance, everything unique if you see is they have direct into the main street. Now, if you observe some time ago, I told you that in general sense, Indus Valley settlements do not have doors or windows onto the main street. Some time ago I said this, Lothal slight variation. We do see them directly into the main street. And most important findings, rice husk, dockyard, artificial dockyard and a bead making industry. Beads are like artificial jewelry, a sort of bead making industry observed in IVC settlements, Indus Valley settlements, particularly Lothal. Lothal is currently in uh, our consideration for uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site. Hopefully, we will get it through. Kalibangan, another important site in Rajasthan. The word Kalibangan should basically bring to your mind Bengal industry. The word Kalibangan in Rajasthani's word basically means black bangles. Kalibangan had black bangles. Kalibangan has houses with private wells, complete all houses have private wells. Kalibangan is also the first site should to show evidence of furrows. Furrows is basically ploughed land uh, channels. Brick platform granaries, granaries were there in Kalibangan also, but they were built on an artificial brick platform, slightly layered up and on top of that they built a granary. Camel bones were found in Kalibangan. 
and no baked bricks or drains in Kalibangan, but rather we, all, we see stone constructions as well. We observe stone constructions also in Kalibangan. This year, one unique site which has been in news a lot is Dholavira. Kalibangan is in Rajasthan, Dholavira is in Gujarat. It's in Gujarat. Dholavira is a site known for three citadels, three high mounts with unique water reservoirs, series of check dams actually. Now, a historian B.B. Lal even went to the point of saying that possibly Dholivira used to go to too much of flooding and because of its consistent problem with flooding, there was an issue and that is the reason they built so many check dams and series of dams. And Dholivira also has arched entrances on their streets, somewhat special and unique. Dholavira has arched entrances, little arch entrance written on the top. On top of the arch, there used to be something written in gypsum, probably street name, probably name of the local governor or local ruler. We do not know. That part we will never be able to clarify or we will never be able to exactly guess what was there. And the last three sites more popular is Surkatoda, where horse remains or horse bones were found, Chanuhudaro where Chanudara is the only city where the entire city has same type constructions. Chanudaro seems to have been a city which actually does not have a classification, which does not have a two part system like citadels, rulers and commoners. This model was not seen in Chanudaro. And then Shortugai. Shortugai as I said is the outermost settlement from the entire Indus core area. It is actually completely outside the Indus river system. Most probably it was a trade center or a trade post, outermost trade post for the Indus valley civilization. Shortugai, Chanhudaro, Surkatoda. And remember Dholavira, Lothal are the ones which are in India, okay, Dholavira and Lothal. And this horse bone remained a major controversy because when the horse bones were found, we were not sure if Indus Valley people actually knew about horse and we are not sure even today because other than the horse bones, there is absolutely zero reference in Indus Valley civilization for the animal horse either in their terracotta toys, either in their seals or in their carvings, no other information except other than horse bones. No other place refers to horses in Indus Valley civilization. And finally, remember Indus Valley's contemporary civilizations were Chinese, the Mesopotamians and the Egyptians. Egyptians on Nile, Mesopotamians on Tigris or Euphrates river and Chinese on the Huang Ho river. Wong Ho River. Okay. That is it in this session, guys. We will continue more about Indus Valley civilization in the next session. Thank you.